first by 1934, barely three years after Alvin Ikoku's school with over 251 students was established, he was faced with the possibility of near shutdown due to a lack of funds. Keep in mind the fact that the financial costs of the school at this time were borne entirely by Ikoku, with occasional gifts and donations from his friends as well as his relations mainly from the mother's side in Calabar. At this time, his numerous requests to the education department for grants at the initial period fell on deaf ears. In fact, in a reply to one of his numerous requests, one of the education officers unrepentantly replied, I am not leaving Enugu until it may, so I can see you at any time. If it is a question of grant, it is useless to waste your time and money coming here. Goodbye. For Ikoku, survival became the ultimate goal. In order to make income cover expenditure, the teacher's salaries were slashed, leaving just sufficient funds to cover actual living expenses. Many accused him of being an autocrat and criticized him for mismanaging part of the school's funds. But this was only the beginning. At this point, Alvan Ikoku expected everybody to work hard and to behave the way he did. Hence, any teacher whose performance in the school fell below what he hoped for was either sacked or made uncomfortable. To some teachers, however, Ikoku was rather too strict. Even the teacher's demand for improved conditions of service and regular payment of salaries at the point was met with stiff resistance. This led to the resignation of many of his staff. Ikoku's salary cuts got so bad, his employees were made to refund salaries and seven months before. His action was indeed enough to show his high-handedness in the administration of the school. In fact, he decreed that all who will not accept cuts should hereby take notice that they are retrenched as on 31st October 1941. On 3rd April 1947, a student's demonstration occurred while Ikoku was away in Lagos attending a legislative council meeting. The students demanded inter alia reduction of fees, enlargement of curriculum, increase in food quantity, reduction in manual labor, and many others. Remarkably, his own son, S.G. Ikoku, was among the leaders of this demonstration. It was later discovered that the matron in charge of students' food diverted some of the funds for personal use. As was characteristic of his administration, Alvan Ikoku descended on the affected students and expelled the ring leaders. Ironically, Ikoku emphasized the teaching of morals, hence the school's motto, Fundamentum Cultus Omnis Animae. The soul of all improvement is the improvement of the soul.
Despite all this, Alvan was known to have offered numerous scholarships to intelligent students, especially those from poor parents, to encourage their education. Because of this and many others, including his advocacy for female education, he was made an officer of the Noble Order of the British Empire OBE, by the colonial government. In 1953, he was awarded the Queen's Coronation Medal QCM. Similarly, the Nigeria government in 1964 made him an officer of the Federal Republic OFR, and in 1965, his genius and service to education was rewarded with an LND degree, Honoris Causa, by the University of Ibadan. Alvan Ikoku was a tired man by 1971. While the Nigerian Civil War was a great distress to him, he was completely disillusioned by the government takeover of his school. Hence, he never survived the stroke attack of November 18th that year. He was mourned by many, given that his selfless service was far reaching. If you have watched this video to the end, thank you so much. Please consider supporting the channel with a subscription. There's so much to learn about our history and I'm poised to help you learn something new always. Thank you for watching. See you next time.